In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create pages with dynamic content on Web Studio by integrating and connecting to Superbase as your source for data. For our demo today, we'll be recreating this page of testimonials where each testimonial, image, and the author is pulled directly from Superbase. We're gonna start off by jumping over to Superbase. And if you don't yet have an account, create one. It's completely free and they're an awesome platform. From there, we're going to create a new project. We're going to give that project a name. I'll just call this one testimonials demo. Create a password for your project. I need a stronger password. There we go. And then create that new project. Once your project is set up, first gonna jump over to the table editor. And from here, we're going to create our new table. This is where all of our data will be stored and what Web Studio will use to fetch that dynamic content. Name the table, whatever you want to name the table. I'm just going to call this testimonials. And for the fields for this demo, I'm just going to create three text fields. So I'm gonna get rid of the existing field that is there. I'm going to add a column. This column will be called name. And for the field type, I'll just select text. Then I'll add a second column. This one I'll do testimonial content. And again, for the field type, I'm also going to choose text. Lastly, I'm going to add a final field that I'll call image. And I'll also give this field type of text. With my table created, I now want to upload all of my images to Superbase's storage so that I can fetch them dynamically. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and head over to the storage tab, create a new bucket. I'll just call this one profile picture. I'll make it a public bucket and I'll go ahead, and save. With my bucket created, I can then upload all of the files or those profile pictures that I've saved and I want to use for my testimonials. Once they've each been uploaded, I'm just going to grab each one I'm going to click on the three little dots. I'm going to click get URL. And I'm then going to jump back to my original table editor. Select my testimonials table. And from here, I'll begin creating my content. So I'm going to insert a new row. I'll give this person a name. Let's call him John Doe. I'll give it some testimonial content, which I'll fill out off screen. And then I'll simply paste in my image URL into image field. I'm going to repeat this process until I have all of the content that I want inside of my testimonials database filled out. We'll cut this boring part out of the video and we'll jump to the completed table. With my table now filled out, we're going to start the process of integrating Superbase to Web Studio. So there's a few little things that you need to set up before you can just plug it all in. First off, Superbase requires every table that you want to integrate through the API to have an RLS policy. So to create this policy, I'm simply going to click on the no active RLS policies. From here, I'm going to create a new policy. I'm going to get started quickly and I'm gonna enable read access for everyone. It will offer me to set up a name and additional config configurations if I need it. I don't in this case, go ahead, click review and then save policy. Next, I want to grab my API URL. This is what we're going to use to form that connection. So to do so, simply head back over to your table editor, find the table that you just created, click on the API docs, switch the language from JavaScript over to Bash, and you'll find your URL here. Go ahead and select it, and then you can simply copy that URL. We'll start populating it in Web Studio. So I'm now going to jump back over to my builder. I've got my little template here that I want to use is repeated as part of my collection, but I don't yet have that collection set up. So to set it up, I'm just going to select my container. I'm going to go and add a new component, select collection component. And from here, I'm going to configure a collection variable. So with a collection selected, go ahead and choose the variable toggle, add new. Name it whatever you want to name it. I'm just going to call this one testimonials. 
for the type, we're going to use a resource. The URL will just be the URL that Superbase gave us. And then for the method, we're going to keep that as get. Now, Superbase requires us to authenticate the request. So to do so, I'm just going to add a new header pair. And if we jump back over to our Web Studio bindings Superbase account, you can see here it needs the name API key in the header. And then after that, we'll need our client key. So I'm just going to go back to Web Studio. For the header, I'll type in API key. And then on Superbase, I'm going to jump to my project settings. I'm going to click on API. Here you'll see your public API key. Simply copy it. Jump back over to Web Studio. Then the value for that API key, I'll paste it. I'll paste it in. Now, if you're concerned about the security around this, don't be. None of this gets exposed on the front end. Your API key stays between you and the builder itself. Okay, so at this point, Web Studio and Superbase are talking to each other, and I'm going to start mapping the data. So I want to start with setting up the data within the collection. So it's essentially telling Web Studio, hey, for this collection, here is all of the data that you can use. And this works in a tree like fashion. Start filtering parents and childs depending on where you need to use that content. On my collection, I'm going to select the data field and I'm going to select my new testimonials.json variable. And from here, you can see in the data preview that it's first fetching data type and then the rest of the actual data. So I'm going to skip the first type by jumping over to the expressions editor, typing dot. So I get a preview of what's to come and I'll select data. This will jump to the next step and you can see it removes that data from the data field. That's a lot of data. Next, I'm going to delete the preview box that was generated automatically within the collection. And I'm simply going to drag in my review box that I pre-created and pre-styled for this video. Review box will be repeated for each of the testimonials that we have in Superbase. We can see here there's a total of eight review wrappers that are present on the page and that are being repeated. That is because under our table, we had eight testimonials that we created in Superbase. Jumping back to the builder, I'm going to now connect the different fields. So I'm simply going to select my paragraph field here. This is where I want the testimonial content, the written content or that review to go. So select it, jump over to settings jump over to text content with the little plus button. This opens again the bindings expression editor. And I'm just going to edit this by changing it from testimonials JSON to collection item. And this is because I've already defined on the collection, right, that parent, that it should be fetching everything from the testimonial file over on Superbase. And now I just want to tell it which string or which line to pick up and pull in this field. So what I'm going to do is within that collection item, I'm just going to click the dot on my keyboard. You can see here, it gives me a preview of what I can select. I've got my image, my name, and my testimonial. So for this one, I'm going to select the actual testimonial, click out of it, that will automatically generate. I'm then going to select my name field. Again, I'm going to map that. So I'm going to select once again, collection item. Then from here, just do dot, but this time choose name. And I'm going to repeat the exact same thing, the image, or I'm going to change the source from a Web Studio source to that Superbase source. So once again, select collection item, dot, and then the image. Okay, we can now see on our page, we have our different testimonials that we created in Superbase, pre-populated here at Web Studio. We've got each of them that have been automatically added if I was to add more on the Superbase side, that would automatically be fetched and added to my page here. I'm going to double check that this looks all good on mobile. This looks sweet. Open back up. And we're pretty much good to go and publish. And that is how to set up dynamic data bindings from Web Studio to Superbase so that you can manage and edit all of your content over on Superbase and for it to be automatically integrated in your Web Studio project. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see in a future video down in the comments.
comments below. I look forward to seeing what you build with the latest bindings updates. And in the meantime, I'll catch you in the next one.